Please stand and sing with us. next song is Scandal of Grace. I think it just fits perfectly with what we've been talking about, where we aren't deserving of God's love or His grace. And like the prodigal son, he, our Father just welcomes, welcomes us no matter what. And it's just such this absurd thought that we haven't done anything to deserve this. So like the scandal of grace, it, it seems so wrong for God to show all this, like His love and His grace for us but it's just, it's just him, it's just God. So sing this with us.
Awesome. Y'all can grab a seat. Hey, real quick, can y'all give it up for the worship band who's done an awesome job prepping and all that? That was huge. Thank y'all. Well, here we are, week three. I'm excited to be back. Um, it is was it time travel day. Yeah, I wish I... Coming off a hard weekend as a Packers fan, I wish I would have been able to wear my Aaron Rodgers jersey to travel back from when we were good. Um, and those things, but I am excited to be back here. As y'all know, we've been talking about the idea of grace, and so I'm going to ask one of y'all, how have we been defining grace? It can't be one of the two guys who've already answered so far. What's one way we define grace, or the idea of concept of grace? Nothing? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, a gift you don't deserve or a gift you don't earn, right? We talked a lot last week about the prodigal son, and we talked about both sons. We talked about the son who ran away, right, and felt like he didn't earn, or sorry, he didn't deserve a spot with the father. And what did the father do? He greeted him, and he closed him. He entered, or welcomed him back into his table, into his family, said, son, you've never left. Like, everything, like, you are mine, right? And then we talked about the older son on the opposite end, who thought, man, I have to work my way up. I need to be good enough so my father will just be pleased with me. And once again, the father said, son, you are missing it. Everything I have is yours. Right, so both of these ideas, and I love um, the scandal of grace and this idea of, man, that we don't deserve this. Well, also, we can't earn this because, man, we are just broken and dead in our trespasses, yet we have a good Father who loves us, who's delivered us through Christ to be with him. And so what we're going to be talking about today um, is a verse in Philippians, what Paul is doing is he's pushing this church of Philippi to continue on, to press on, to know Christ more. And so as I was finishing, we talked a little bit about my story. We talked about the prodigal son um, and the father and how he welcomes us in with grace. And what I want to talk to you today is how we continue in grace, right? Because just like that son, when he returned back to the table and returned back to the family, that didn't mean that, man, continue to walk in those truths would, would be easy all the time. There would come difficulties. There would come challenges. So here's Paul talking to a church that's facing those same deals. And he tells them, man, continue on. Press on. And so we're going to be in Philippians 3. Um, if you have a Bible, if not, I think we got slides up there. Nice. Um, quick story. I went to Texas a and I graduated in 2015. I was in the core. Um, I did not know what I was getting myself into. I didn't grow up in Aggie. I grew up actually a Longhorn fan. So but I was like, man, I was going to go into the military, so the core just made sense. And then they shaved off all my hair. They, like, took away my first name and said, you're just Fish Sledge from now on. 
and they made me wear khaki from like the 1940s um, that smelled horrendous. If it ever rained, like no one sat by us in class because we just stunk, right? And so I didn't know a lot of these things going into it. Also, I should have guessed, but for some reason I didn't know that like they're going to make us run. That's just what, I don't know, people in the military do a lot. And so like day two, like I just had all my like liberties and freedoms taken away. I was wearing khaki. They said, all right, you have to now go get tested to run. I was like, man, I haven't ran in, I don't know, ever. And so I was like, all right, great, long distance running, that's my strength, uh, not. So we get there, and they just, like, send us off for a mile and a half. Um, I hit a solid, I think it was, like, 14 minutes. I don't know if any of y'all are runners. For a mile and a half, not great, right? Not great. Um, So, yeah, so I did not pass, right? So they pull us outside and said, hey, the minimum. Like, most guys should be hitting, y'all should be hitting, like, I don't know, seven minutes, eight minutes, nine minutes, somewhere in that range. The minimum you get is 1230. Sledge, you bombed it. Like, that was bad. 14 minutes, like, but thankfully this is a test. But you have a month and a half to to pick it back up, to get back in, and to pass that 1230. So that's what we did. We started running as a a unit. Me and my buddies would run on our off time because it wasn't fun, but we needed to. I mean, we run together, and as I have people on my left and my right, it just helps me. It helps me figure out what a pace looked like. It helps me just push me on those things. And I knew, hey, my goal is a mile and a half. My goal is 1230, right? And whatever's in the past is in the past. Like, I don't, that doesn't matter anymore. What matters is just passing this test, right, and pressing on and this idea. So went on and whatever, I passed. It was fine. Um, but it was awesome. But in this idea, Paul, uh, he's going to be talking about running a race right, because they didn't really, like, have, like, football back then, Um, but race running. And and what what I love about this concept is the same idea. He says, man, press on. The other side of this race is, if you're like me, running doesn't come easy. And so he recognizes, and he uses this analogy to say, man, it's going to take effort. But ultimately, at the end, the goal is worth it. The prize is something far greater than we could ever imagine. So press on. Run the race with endurance. And do these things. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to open this up, we're going to break through it, and I want to give you all three challenges on how we can continue to run this race. So Philippians 3, what Paul has done heading into this, these verses, he's kind of just explained his past. He said, hey, here's who I was. I was like the top dog when I was Saul. Like, man, I was the Pharisee of the Pharisees. I was born on the seventh, like, I, all these things. I was, I was great. He said, but I consider all of that rubbish. Like, all of that is trash. You actually do a word study, like, it's, it's bad. Like, that was just dumb, is what he says, in comparison to knowing Christ Jesus. Like, none of those things matter. All my accolades, all my victories, all those things that are on my letterman, none of that matters in comparison to knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. And so the, then he goes on to say this. He says, not that I've already obtained this, this being knowing Jesus perfectly, or that I am perfect, but I press on to make it my own. Why? Because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I've made it my own, but one thing I do is I forget what lies behind and I strain forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And let those of us who are mature think this way. And if anything, or if in in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Sweet. I'm going to pray for us and then we're going to jump into this text in these next few minutes. Lord, I thank you. Um, I thank you for Brad's Christian. I thank you for the opportunity to even come here um, to share what you um, have shown me and have taught me, Lord. I pray that as we head into this time, Father, we're encouraged. We're encouraged that we even get to be allowed into this race, Lord, that we even get to know you and be in relationship with you, Father. That is our motivation, is is your grace. That as we step into this um, arena, the Lord, ultimately, we don't belong here, but yet you've allowed us to be here. Lord, also pray for strength, um, Father, because it is hard in this world to run with you. There's a lot of people on the outside pulling us away or trying to distract us. And a lot of things, um, even in our hearts, are desired to get in the way. But, Lord, the prize of being with you, the prize of knowing you, of intimately having a relationship with you, um, is greater than anything else we could have in this world. So, Father, use this time. Um, remove any distractions we have coming into here, Lord. Um, Lord, let my words be your words. Let it all glorify you. Let it not be about who's here on stage or anything else, Lord. Let this be about Jesus. Let his name and Jesus' name be exalted above any other name. Father, we love you. I invite you to this time. I pray that you use it for your glory, for your kingdom. Amen. Right, so we talk about Paul. Paul's talking about this race, and we said, man, 
the, he begins this idea that, that I not I have already or sorry for I've not already obtained this, but I press on right. So this idea of a perfect relationship with Christ. And what Paul is saying is like, man, I, I don't have that. I don't have that perfect relationship. Here I am writing half the New Testament. He's like, but I don't have that thing yet. I am not perfect, right? But I, but but I want that. I want that intimate relationship. I want that perfection with Christ. With the man, I know him and I walk with him and I abide with him perfectly. Right, and it shows that, that Paul is not just chasing religion. He's not just chasing titles. More what he's chasing is that relationship, similar to what the sons came into. And what the sons were missing is that relationship, that deep knowledge with the Father. Right, so he doesn't have that perfection. The reality is none of us, this side of heaven, will be perfect. But Paul says, but, but it's still worth pursuing, right? For, for God, it's not just about, a big part of it is, man, in eternity we get to spend with him. The end goal is vital. There's also purpose in between. It's, man, that it's about the race. It's not just about the prize. It's not just about the finish line. But the race also matters. Right? But at perfection, man, at the finish line, there will be perfection. There will be no more death. And there will be no more sin. And there will be no more evil. And it will just be us intimately getting to worship and spend with the Lord for eternity. That is our finish line. But until then, that doesn't mean we just go sit on the stands. That doesn't mean we just go hang out at the concession stands, and wait around. No, God says, man, you have purpose. You have reason today that there is meaning, that my grace has not just delivered you from hell, but my grace has delivered you from sin today so that you can walk in freedom, so we can live for something greater and something purposeful. And that's what running this race looks like. So three ways we're gonna, that, that Paul helps us and encourages us to stick in the race is one is we have to forget the past. You can't run backward. It's not very effective. I hit a 14-minute mile and a half like myself. Um, you need to look forward, fix your eyes on the prize, and then don't run alone, right? So the first one, Paul says, he says, this is what I encourage you to do is forget what lies behind you. Man, Paul, if you know anything about Paul, previously Saul, like, I, like he said, he had a past. He had some things that were, that were behind him. Right? Not only, like he said earlier, all his accolades, all his good things, his achievements, all these things that, like, man, I can boast in these things. But he's pretty good at, at what he did before that. Right? But not only that, he also had plenty of negative things. He had plenty of baggage. Right? He killed Christians. He, like, persecuted those who were following Christ. The, the faith he is now living in, the faith he is now protesting, he's like, well, I just came back from, like, killing some of your friends, but hey, here, follow Jesus. Like, he had baggage behind him. Now, when he says for God, it's not like he has like just completely removed it from his memory. He, it's still there, but what he doesn't let it do is weigh him down. What he's done is he's released the weight it has on who he is. He's, he's released this weight on, on, the, on being able to pull him out of this race, to be able to pull him out of this relationship. And these things. So it's no longer, man, similar to what we've been talking about, that this idea of I deserve these things or that I don't deserve these things. Really what he's saying is like, man, I'm in this race by the grace of God. And so I'm able to forget what lies behind me. I don't need to focus on the past. Because Jesus has paid for those things. He's redeemed those things. He is greater than anything that is in the past. Right? So similar for me, y'all got to hear my story that first week. Because, man, when I became a believer, this was tough. This was a hard concept for me to come into. Because I walked in with, like, just luggage of baggage and just piles of stuff. It was like, man... That's great. I see all my christian friends, and they're doing all these great things. It's like, and that's really cool for you, but I probably can't because I'm just not good enough. Just all these things, and it was just weighing me down. And I was like, man, I want to have a relationship with Christ, and I want those things, but I can't just stop thinking about my past. I can't just stop thinking about my failures and the places I've messed up and the people I've hurt and all those things. Right, but, but what Paul says and throughout the rest of Scripture, man, it says this. It says, Romans 5, 8, it says, while you were still sinning, Christ died for you. We talked about this one before. It's like not while you had it all figured out, when you're at your best, no, while you're at your worst, Christ died for you. He delivered you. He loved you in that worst moment. And then Hebrews 12, 1 says this. It says, let us lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Man, Christ has died to those shackles of broken. In his eyes, and ultimately the only eyes that matter are the eyes of the Lord, those sins are gone. They're paid for. Man, the blood of Christ has paid for those things. And he's released you from those. So 
what we need to do is we need to allow ourselves also to receive that grace. But God has given that grace. That grace is present. You can't change that because that's who God is. And if your faith is in Christ, then you are forgiven. But what Paul and what the author of Hebrews is saying is, that, therefore, we need to let those things go. Because God already has. And he wants us back at the table. He wants us back in the presence. He wants us in this grace so we can run forward. And so it took me time. Like, I'm not going to say, man, instantly, one Bible study, I was like, I walked in with all this baggage, and then I walked out just like free. No, it took time. It took time to understand grace, to understand, and like I said last week, who God's character is, who God actually is, what these things mean. Because the more I was able to understand him and his love and his grace, the better, or the more it allowed me to walk in that freedom. And then I was actually able to run the race fully. I'm not dragging all this weight behind me. I was able to truly run this race fully. All right, so what Paul is saying, the first thing he says, man, we have to forget the past. If it's maybe for you, it's like, man, I am good because of I am good. All the things I've done, that is what makes me good. God says, no, you are good because I've deemed you Maybe the other side is, man, I am no good. Like, I don't even deserve to be here because of X, Y, and Z. God says, no, you are good because I've deemed you good. The truth stays the same because he is consistent. He is good. Right, so what Paul says, leave that behind. Forget the past. You can't run effectively if you're, like, looking through the rear view mirror. You just can't. You, you have to fix your eyes forward. And so then, then he says, he changed that perspective. He says, so if we're not looking behind us, we forget what lies behind, we instead need to fix our eyes on what's ahead. So when I was six, maybe seven, I decided that my dream was to be a BMX superstar. BMX is like, you know, motocross, all that stuff, but not as cool. Like, take away the engine, it's just a bicycle, right? But man, I was seven, I thought it was awesome. So I, my mom bought me a bike, and I had like this sweet gear, it was bright yellow, and I looked like a banana on the course, right? But I was like, this is what I'm gonna do. Like, I love it. Um, I raced twice, uh, first time, third place. Solid, out of three. Second time, first place, though, right? One first place. There was also three people. Um, but this one looked a little different, and I'm going to explain that story. Um, I remember right before I got on the race, right, I had just come off my, set, my first race. I was like, I lost. I was the worst. <laughs> like, there's not going to be anything. I remember my dad sitting with me and talking. He's like, hey, Gavin, no matter what, like, just keep pedaling. Like, I'm going to be right there at the finish line cheering you on. You're going to go over all these, like, jumps and, and those things is like, no matter what, just keep pedaling, and I will be there. And when you're done, man, it'll be awesome. And I'll be so proud of you. So I remember that. So here we are. We, we go up on this race, and we break down, and these first two guys are just like, Phew! they're gone. And I'm just like, all right, here we go. This is awesome. It wasn't. So I'm going over these hills and all these things, and I finally get to a place where we're kind of all neck and neck. It's more their neck and neck, and I'm kind of like right behind them. Um, final turn. No lie. They smack into each other. And they just crash. I was like, oh, my gosh. This is my moment. Like, this is what I was made for. Like, everything is happening right here. But then also I started feeling really bad, and I started crying for them. It's like those poor kids in my mind. So I'm having this conflict of, like, these kids crashed. I'm going to win. I'm a champion. And then it's like, oh, these poor kids, like, they crashed. But I just remember in the back of my mind, because then even then I saw them crash. It's like, am I going to crash? Because they were good, and they crashed, and I'm not good. So the result is probably crash as well. But I remember just that, what my dad told me at the end, or at the beginning. He said, man, Gavin, just keep pedaling. Like, no matter what, remember I'm at the finish line. And just keep going towards me. Right? So that's what I did. I just fixed my eyes on the finish line. That's all I thought about was just, like, pedal. One pedal at a time, going towards my dad. That's my finish line. So I passed those poor kids that crashed. And I won, right? I won first spread. It was it a win? I'm going to take it as a win. I have the trophy somewhere. Right? And I won, but I remember, man, none of it mattered. I remember just being greeted by my dad, um, and regardless if I would have had first place, if I would have had last place, no matter what, like, he would have greeted me with a hug, and he'd been proud of me. Right, it was that same idea, man, that life is going to throw stuff at us, that there's going to be moments where you're feeling victorious, there's going to be moments where you're feeling like a failure, there's going to be moments where you might be the one who crashed, or you see people who crashed, but, but what matters, and what Paul continues to say is, man, remember the finish line. Just like my dad said, one step at a time. Remember who was there and fix your eyes on that. Don't get distracted with the things in between. Just remember what matters at the end. And so as we forget what lies behind us, we need to fix our eyes on Christ, right? The founder and perfecter of our faith who joyfully took the cross. 
we need to grow to know him more in those things. And so, man, what does that look like? I said before, running a race is not an easy analogy. It means effort. It means trials. It means difficulty. It means then you're going to sweat. It means you're going to have to sacrifice. But we're not going to say that, man, Christianity is just rainbows and unicorns. It's really easy. No. What's, it, it's worth it, but, it, but it's going to require some, some effort. It's going to require some, some sacrifice. And so, man, spending time in the Word, getting to know the character of God, walking through um, in faith and, and struggles and, and spending time sharing His Word and helping other people. Like, you know, I, I work with the youth group. There's so many incredible churches here in this town that y'all don't even know. There's so many. There's so many awesome youth groups in here. And man, that there's people around you who want you to know Jesus, who want you to help you to follow Jesus. Get plugged in. Get invested. Find someone who's older to learn from. Find people who are alongside you to study the scripture with. Like that way you can know the final or the finish line. That way you can know the one who's at that finish line. And so when the trials come, you're not thrown back by the distractions. You're not thrown back by those things, but you're instead able to continue to run with endurance towards Christ. Right? Just like a horse, when they go into races. They put on blinders. Why? To remove the distractions from them, to remove everything else from them, and just to help them finish, focus on that finish line. We need to know who Jesus is. We need to seek him and follow him. And ultimately, we need to glorify him. Why? Because it's worth it. Because in that, we find peace in the anxiety moments. In that, we find strength in these weary moments. In that, we find joy and love even when we feel isolated. Because our feelings don't define the truth. The truth is what God says and those who are out in this season. So, so we have that. Forget what lies behind because Christ has paid for that. Focus on what's ahead. Focus on the prize of knowing Jesus, of intimately walking with him. And last one, um, Paul kind of changes his language after he says, man, forget what lies behind. Focus on what lies ahead. He says, therefore, let us do these things, brothers. Right? He changes his language from doing this alone to a, a more communal, a more group idea. He says, let, let us, therefore, Right, so meaning, like I said before, you, you, you can't do this alone. You can't. Like, you were not made to walk through life alone. You might think, but Gavin, I'm really good. No, like, you, you were not made to walk through life alone. God did not create you for that. He created you for relationships. He created you for community. First, with a relationship with him, but also a relationship with other believers. Like, you need that strength. Just like when I was running and training in the core, I got better because I had buddies around me who were good. And they helped pace me. They helped push me. They helped pick me up when my knees failed. Like, whatever it was, they helped. You couldn't have done that alone. And the same thing is, man, we are stronger together. How cool is it that you go to school where you have fellow believers, like, right next to you? That's pretty awesome. I know we can take those things for granted. Where you have teachers who not only love you, but also love Jesus. Like, that's awesome. Take these things. Use these things. They're right here. And when you get to the end of your high school career, you'll be able to look back. It's like, man, I, I ran this race with endurance. I took the things that God put in front of me, and I used them to know him and to know him better. Right, real quick picture. This is, um, I always butcher his name, Iman Cog, Cog, Coglin. Y'all don't know who he is, so we're just going to keep going there. He was Irish. He was a world record holder in 1987. Fastest miler at the time. Right, and so he was running a qualifying race um, at the World Indoor Track in Indianapolis. So this would have qualified him to go um, to the championship. Right, so two and a half laps left. So he was pretty much in the middle of the race. He trips and falls. The rest of them, they don't. They just keep going. Right, they didn't have the internal conflict of like crying inside. No, they just kept booking it. They went. Right, so so he gets back up. And instead of just like sulking or being like focused on what was what happened, no, he just he just goes and he runs. He gets back up and he takes off and he actually manages to catch up with like the leaders. And so here he is, 20 yards left in the race. He's in third place. Like that is good enough to qualify to move on. Top three go to the championship and he is there. He just come back from like failure, from last place, and here he is, third place. And so he's 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 right there. He's in the middle lane and he's running. What does he do? He looks to his inside. To see if anyone's there. He doesn't see anyone. It's just one, two, three. And so he gives up. He pulls back a little bit. He takes that last 20 yards. Instead of finishing all the way through, he pulls back. And he 
takes his eyes off the prize, and right then in that moment, someone on the outside comes, takes over. He gets fourth place. Right? In a moment, man, where he he got up. He didn't let the past like define him. He kept running and he kept pushing it. Right at the end. He took his eyes off the prize. He took his eyes off what mattered. He lost. Now the beauty is in the end, we never lose. We get to the finish line, man. Eternity is great. But man, all the way to the finish line matters. Because the impact you can have as you follow Christ matter, right? Because walking with Christ matters. So the race was worth running. So I push all, hey, run the race. If you feel like you're outside, like you, if your faith is in Christ, you are in this race. No one's put you on the bleachers but yourself. Run the race, press on, and keep your eyes on the prize. And here's some questions for our Bible teachers. Is this idea is, man, are you running the right race? Are there burdens? Are there things? Are there distractions that are slowing you down? Now, are you running with the right crew? As we said before, don't run alone, but there's some groups that are going to pull you off the snack tray, and there's some that are going to keep pushing you into the finish line. Which group are you running with? I think that's the last one. Oh, yeah. And is knowing Jesus and becoming like him, is that your finish line? Or is it something else? Is it, man, I just want to be the most popular, the most smart, or the X, Y, or Z? Well, I went over time, um, but I really do appreciate y'all letting me come out here these past few weeks. It really has been a joy. I've looked forward to this a lot. Um, I am really, really grateful for this, and I'm excited to see what God continues to do for y'all. I know he's doing awesome things in y'all's lives, and I hope y'all continue to press on. Because, man, I believe in y'all. I believe in this generation. I, I, I've seen middle schoolers and high schoolers change lives, and my life's going to change too, because I know man, when y'all pursue Christ, that eternity is going to be changed. Let me pray for y'all. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for these brothers and sisters. I thank you for these um, students who I'm um, here in this room. Lord, I pray that you would continue to draw them to know you more. And Lord, that you use them for incredible things. Lord, thanks for this time. Thanks for this school. Um, thank you for the faculty and all these teachers. Lord, I pray that you continue to also to use them to, to encourage these students to know you more and to love you in all things. We pray all in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. Hey, thank you all so much. Y'all have a great homecoming week.